It is an honor to welcome you to the second edition of the Africa Sub Sovereign Governments Network Conference, holding in my home country, Nigeria. It's always nostalgic to be home. And today, I'm elated that our country has once again stepped up to champion the cause of Africa's integration by defining a path that will bring regional integration efforts to the grassroots. We thank His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari for his presence here today, which I take as a resounding endorsement of this initiative and evidence of his and Nigerian government's commitment to the goals of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to also express our appreciation to our partners, the Nigerian Governors Forum, led by my dear brother, Governor Fayemi, and also other governors and the executives of that forum for the support we received in ensuring that this important forum convened to promote the critical role of African subnationals in promoting trade and investments in the context of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Dear brother, though you may be stepping down as governor of Ekiti State, your recent and richly deserved appointment as president of the Forum of Regions of Africa is testament to your experience and contribution to advancing the role of sub-sovereigns as drivers of development. We are therefore grateful to the Forum that you remain with us and continue to catalyze the transformative power that sub-sovereign governments hold in the development and promotion of African regions. The African Sub-Sovereign Governments Network was conceived as a platform to promote dialogue, cooperation, and collaboration among sub-sovereign governments in the conduct of intra-African trade and investments, promotion of industrialization and development, especially in the context of the implementation of the AF CFTA. It is expected to fill an important gap because it recognizes that whereas trade, commercial, trade and commercial policies are national, their implementation usually is sectoral and local. Involvement of regional and local governments will make it possible for the full benefits of the agreement to be realized. The second edition of this conf conference follows the successful inaugural edition we had in Durban in November last year, and which attracted uh, some of you here in this hall. I'm pleased to note that many of the resolutions from that inaugural conference are being implemented. The meeting we are holding today is the, one of the outcomes of that inaugural meeting. A key early goal of the association or the network is to expand membership. I would therefore like to acknowledge with much appreciation the presence of governors and distinguished leaders from other African nations that we are not with us at the inaugural conference, but who are here today. We appreciate you joining us in promoting this initiative and look forward to working very closely with you in advancing the shared agenda. Your Excellency, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a major objective of the network is to grow in trafficking trade and investment by bringing the AFCFTA to the grassroots. Intra-African trade remains stubbornly low at 16% of total African trade, despite years of pursuing continental and regional economic integration efforts. And unless 
we push harder and bring the work to the grassroots, we are likely not going to make much progress. They have CFT and a drive to boost in traffic and trade, which is the arrowhead of African Bank's strategic plan, will not only reduce Africa's vulnerability to external shocks, but help transform our economies. The COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine crisis have both revealed the devastating impact of Africa's dependence on external markets. The fact that after more than 60 years of independence, Africa remains unable to feed itself, clothe itself, finance itself, and medically care for itself, uh, care for its people, speaks volumes about the road we still have to travel to attain self-dignity, despite over 60 years of independence. We cannot expect to reverse any of these by continuing in the old ways. We need to disrupt the system, and the AFCFTA provides a platform that will enable us to do that. The network we have today is also one way we can move to disrupt the system. As we are aware, the AFCFTA seeks to bring together 55 African countries and create a market of more than 1 billion people and more than $3 trillion in GDP. That is a huge market we can aim to leverage. With your permission, I will outline our strategy, which is to reverse what the colonial, the colonial powers used to divide us and make us poor and continue to be divided, atomistic, and unable to grow beyond the levels we found ourselves. I will outline that strategy as so succinctly captured in the writings of the colonial administrator, Mr. Sarao, who noted, and I quote, economically, a colonial possession means to the home country simply a privileged market once it withdraws the raw materials it needs, dumping its own manufacturers in return. Economic policies reduced to rudimentary procedures of gathering crops and battering them. Moreover, by strictly imposing on its colonial dependency the exclusive consumption of its manufactured products, the metropolis prevents any efforts to use or manufacture local raw materials on the spot and any contact with the rest of the world. The colony is forbidden to establish any industry, to improve itself by economic progress, to, arise, to rise above the stage of producing raw materials, or to do business with the neighboring territories for its own enrichment across the customs barriers erected by the metropolitan power. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the foregoing, it is clear to us why we must put our hands together to ensure the success of the AFCFTA. And that's why our present bank is doing its bit to make sure that this happens. We've disbursed over $20 billion in the past five years to support intra-African trade. And we plan to do $40 billion in the next five years. We have supported the AFCFTA Secretariat we have supported the AFCFTA Secretary through uh, funding, providing them grants to make sure they operate effectively. We launched a collaboration with the AFCFTA Secretariat and AU Commission, the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System to support payment for inter-African trade in African currencies. That system is now operating. We have provided $3 billion to enable us support the clearing and settlement under that system. We've also launched the African Collaborative Transit Guarantee Scheme to enable goods to move across African borders easily. Working with our partners Arise Integrated Industrial Parks, we are building industrial parks and special economic zones across Africa with projects completed or ongoing in Togo, Benin, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Democratic Republic of the Congo, 
Rwanda, Malawi, Chad. And we will continue to do so until we begin to export manufactured goods in a considerable quantity. We have supported the harmonization of standards and are developing quality infrastructure across Africa. A project in Ogun State has just been completed and will be commissioned before the end of the year. Other projects are ongoing in Egypt, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and also in the industrial parks I mentioned. And to support infrastructure investments, our present bank has expanded its risk-bearing investments instruments and launched a comprehensive guarantee program aimed at facilitating the needed investments in infrastructure. We have also expanded all other programs and initiatives uh, we have for intra-African trade. And most of the banks who, are, who may be here with us and who are operating across Africa are beneficiaries, especially those who are focused on intra-Africa and trade. We also recognize that one of the key constraints to the expansion of investments, especially infrastructure, is a lack of bankable projects. So we've created a project preparation facility that is making it possible to create bankable projects. We are supporting Africans and African banks to acquire the banks, the international banks, that are leaving the continent, making it possible for Africans to control the capital that supports businesses in Africa. In addition to this, our president will also support this network through various other products and initiatives to facilitate its work, expanding traffic and trade, expand the investments, capacity building, and make sure that it becomes the engine that will grow uh, development and in traffic and trade on the continent. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have a long way to go to use trade to promote development and take our continent, our people out of poverty. I would like to assure you that our Flexing Bank will do its part. We look forward to working with the members of the network, as well as others, in making sure that Africa achieves the agenda the AU has set for it, the agenda 2063, the Africa we want. I thank you for your kind attention.